It's the backbone of this mission and what the military describe as a force multiplier. Based on an Airbus A330, the Voyager is part transport plane, part filling station. And wherever the RAF's fast jets go, it goes too. For the past four years, this aircraft has left RAF Akwateri most days, headed for the skies above Iraq, providing the fuel the RAF and coalition needs to take the fight to Islamic State. We're now flying over an area of northern Iraq close to the Syrian border, and below us is a key coalition base being used to train members of the Syrian Democratic Forces, mainly Kurdish soldiers. These RAF typhoons have been given the job of providing armed overwatch, of protecting that base and making sure it's as safe as possible from attack by Islamic State. The Voyager carries around 100 tonnes of fuel, enough to top up other aircraft from its own tanks. On average, RAF jets will refuel like this two or three times per sortie. The older, thirstier tornadoes taking up to six tonnes each time. The more economical typhoons, just three. 27-year-old Sean has been a Voyager co-pilot for the past year. He asked us not to reveal his identity. So the great advantage of the Voyager is, like you say, we don't have to change the configuration of the aircraft in order to fulfil the air-to-air refuelling role. Uh, so we can fly an aircraft out to Akrotiri full of passengers uh, and within a matter of hours it will be ready to fly uh, an, an operational mission in support of air-to-air refuelling. Today, yes, six-hour mission, and that, that is a, a pretty normal mission for us. Uh, so we'll take a full load of fuel on board, and we can be airborne, and like I say, we can do approximately four refuelling brackets uh, with each of the, the typhoons or tornadoes or whichever aircraft we happen to be refueling at the time. Uh, we will be given certain air to air refueling areas, and we will tend to remain within the confines of those areas unless we are told that, or we request to go to another area to expedite a particular mission. But generally, we will be allocating areas and will remain within that area for the duration. For these fast jet pilots, the margin for error is very small. They're travelling at around 300 miles per hour, just feet from a Voyager full of fuel. On board today is the man in charge of shader operations from Cyprus. He flew the Tornado F3 for 15 years and knows very well what it's like to refuel in flight. So the pilots are trained in the basic skills of formation. Uh, they will come al alongside the aircraft once they are co-speed with the aircraft, it then gets a little bit more difficult because they need to put the probe out and as they close in to get their probe into the basket, there is a, a, an effect where as you get within a few metres of the basket, the bow wave of air passing around the aircraft will affect the basket. So the pilots are all trained to come within a few metres, they'll pause. Once they've done that pause, they'll then close with the basket at a much slower speed, probably only one to two miles an hour of overtake. And that's where the real skill top starts to come in. What the pilot needs to do is not be distracted by that basket moving around. He needs to formate on the aircraft uh, and just hold his line and hold his nerve. And then as he pushes forward, hopefully he'll alive, the uh, probe will go into the basket first time. If it doesn't and he misses, he needs to drop back, have a little bit of patience, allow the basket to stabilize, and then move forward again. But the real skill is not staring at the basket. As that basket moves around in the airflow, he needs to look at the aircraft, formate on the aircraft ahead of him, and just allow the position behind the basket to stabilize before he closes in contact with it. RAF typhoons joined the war on Islamic State in late 2015, when Parliament voted to extend the fight against IS into Syria. The RAF has six of them based at Akrotiri in Cyprus and we spoke to one of the pilots about the pressures of long combat missions. Yes, yeah, so I came out here in uh, January the first, first time this year and uh, the difference between then and now is quite marked. We've, we've taken an awful lot of ground from Daesh. Since we started, we're about 98% uh, reduced in their, in their area of landmass that they've controlled. So uh, it's good to see we're having such a positive effect on, on eliminating Daesh. Yeah, they're still there, they're very much evident. We, we know the areas they're in that they still control, so, so that's an easy find. But we, we're also uh, being sent more often uh, throughout Iraq at the moment, uh, targeting different splinter cells that they have. We can be strapped into our ejection seat for nine hours uh, in, in one go, which is, which is a long time sat down, obviously. It's, um, it's also uh, an awful long time to maintain that level of concentration you need uh, to operate the Typhoon. Flying a jet in combat for that long takes its toll on the body and the RAF has dedicated conditioning coaches attached to Opshada to help aircrew recover and remain fit to fly. And the main one we do out here as well is work on the neck strength. 
So if we can we work on the deep neck muscles, trying to hold the neck in a neutral position, so when they are pulling high G in the aircraft, they can sustain and keep that and hopefully delay the, um, any onset of acute neck injuries, which then hopefully, fingers crossed, prevents them going to physio referral and then not being able to fly. With the tornado due to retire next March and the F-35 not yet ready for active service, the typhoon will become, for a while, the UK's sole frontline jet. Whether more will be sent to Akrotiri to bolster the force here hasn't yet been revealed. For the pilots who fly them and the tanker that keeps them airborne, Op Shader is expected to go on for some time. What remains of Dash as a military force now in its last throes of life, but not yet wholly defeated.